Hey there, welcome to Synth Seeker. My name's Luke. So I was hanging out in one of my favorite Discord servers, a bunch of music nerds. And one thing that came up was, hey, wouldn't it be really awesome if we could use the sort of device navigation buttons on the Ableton Push to navigate through some of your VST parameters? Um, you can map VST parameters using uh, like a... Uh, MIDI instrument rack or uh, external instrument instrument rack. Um, but there's a limitation. You can only map in live 10, uh, eight parameters. In live 11, I think up to 16 parameters. So we got to talking about, hey, wouldn't it be possible? It, would, it might be possible to sort of, um, sort of engineer a max for live solution that kind of works. Uh, trying to do it with as little effort as possible, <laughs> okay? So this is not a, an amazingly complete solution. Uh, but it's something that works. So the the thing in uh, the synth in question at the time was um, Arturia pigments. So let me pull one of those in here real quick. Pigments. All right. So we get a pigments. Um, and the nice thing is that pigments actually facilitates this uh, and makes it easier. We're going to need something else. We're going to need one of these CC8s. Okay. Now. All right. So if I bring up what this is, is just um, a little Max for Live plugin. Uh, I've got a link to it in the uh, description. You can download it. Um, it's an AMXD file. You drop it into your user library in Live. And um, I think I've actually got a video on how to use this previously because this it was something that existed. I made it a couple of years ago, but it works for this solution. So what this is, is it's eight knobs and eight little text areas. And what you do is you type in the CCs you want, the C, uh, the continuous control, uh, continuous change numbers, MIDI CCs, right? CC stands for continuous change. Um, you type in the numbers that you want to use, um, and you can go look up online. There are some standard sort of MIDI standard things. Mod wheel is always CC one. Uh, I think pitch bend or maybe breath controller. I think yeah, no pitch bends. Uh, breath controller, I think it's CC2. Anyway, it doesn't matter. You can override them, but you can go through the list and there's a bunch that are, you know, to be defined or user definable. Pick those numbers. It's from zero to 127. Um, and uh, so I'm just, I'm going to arbitrarily, you type in the numbers you want here. And then when you turn these knobs, it sends the values for that CC down into whatever's downstream. Okay. Um, now I'm just going to dump some in here. That in itself isn't great. If you look here, um, if we look at the CC here, it says values one, two, three, four, five, six. These are labels that cannot be dynamically changed. Okay, these are the actual um, short scripting name where it says value one, value two on the push. When you load a Max for Live plugin, it loads these names in and you can change them programmatically, but it screws up Live's mappings and they don't want you to do that. They actually say, don't do this. You can work around it, but it sucks. So generally you can't change these values. So what this is, is this is a solution to sort of add an extra hoop to jump through, but it'll let you have these labels work and then you can um, map as many controls as you want using multiple of these CC8 dupes here, okay? So what you do is let's open up pigments. What makes this possible is you can do this with any VST um, that you want, as long as it supports um, MIDI CC mappings. So if you go into the settings menu of pigments, okay, then you go over to MIDI. There is, hey, my MIDI controller I'm using is the generic MIDI controller. You could set up if you've got an, you know, an actual Arturia control surface or, uh, surface or something, you can, you know, it'll do smart mappings for you. But in this case, we're just using generic MIDI controller and the default layout is they've got some mappings in here already, right? The macros, uh, the VCA envelope, the, the envelope two, which I think it defaults to filter, things like that. And what it is, is this column CC, these are the numbers that you put into these boxes, okay? Like, so I've already put in, let's see, VCA attack is 73, decay 75, sustain 79, release is 72, all right? And I put those in here, 73, 75, 79, 72, all right? So it is listening for those CCs, okay? So if I go look at the envelope here, so our VCA envelope here, those values here, 
Okay, they're mapped to these. They've already been mapped. You know, uh, Arteria has it by default. So if I go out here and I turn these knobs, you can see the envelope changes, okay? And I can do that from the push as well, right? That's fine. So that in itself is enough. That'll work. If you don't care what these labels say, you don't mind that they all say value one, two, three, you're done, okay? And you could put in as many duplicates of this CC8 plugin. You can drop a whole bunch of those in there, enter the right values out of this list, and then, you know, go, t go nuts, right? But maybe you want to... Um, Maybe you want to uh, automate things that aren't in this list. Well, you can add them. You can say add control. Uh, I'll get to that in a minute. Let's talk about these labels. I want these labels to look right, right? So what we do is we close pigments for a second. We go out here and we group this control all by itself. It just sits in a control by itself. So we have these eight macros. These you can rename and that, will, that name will be reflected in the push, okay? So what we do is we put our control numbers in that match whatever it is in the, our VST we want to map to, right? And then we map these to our macro controls. Now I'm in Live 11, and so it'll let me map up the 16 values. Um, I should make another one of these CC controls that has 16 knobs, and that would be convenient. But I'm just going to, um, let's do two more five and six. All right. And now these are zeros. I, I'm just going to choose an arbitrary number. I'm going to say 42 and 43. Okay. So this knob is CC 73, 75, 79, 72. This one's 42. I just pulled that number out of my butt. Yeah, sure. Something might be using it and I'm going to steal it from that thing. So you might want to check your manual, be aware of what your synths are using by default, uh, but you can use anything. Uh, from 0 to 127. Actually, I, I don't think you can use 0. Uh, we can look it up. Uh, anyway, but that one's 42 and this one's 43. So these are mapped to these macros, okay? Now, we can put this away with this button. We'll hide that. And here's our macros. Now, we can rename these, right? So this is, um, this is VCA uh, uh, attack, right? And this one's VCA decay. And this one is VCA sustain. And this one is VCA release. Okay, and these ones, I don't know what these are yet, but we'll, we can rename them. But when we change these here, this gets saved in our set. It'll remember this the next time we go load this up. And if we go look on the push, look, it's there, VCA attack, decay, sustain, release. So I've got these numbers, right? and I've put these in. If I open Arturia's pigments back up, and we look at VCA here. Here we go. I can change these. It works fine. On the push, the names are appropriate. Okay, so that works good. Let's say I want to uh, map attack curve, the shape of this curve, and the decay curve. Okay, well, those aren't listed over here. What do we do? Well, you click this Learn button. And this is very specific to pigments, and you'll have to check the manual for your various other synths. But in pigments, when learn is active, things that are already mapped show up as red overlay, and things that can be mapped show up as purple. So then you just click on the thing you want to do. I'm going to say attack curve. And now it's sitting here down on the corner waiting. It's waiting. It's saying, okay, send me a MIDI CC. So I go out to live to this value 5, and I go turn the knob. And there it is. Now I can change the curve and it's filled in. The 42 that I put in this box in the uh, CC8 control, that matches this one now. So let's also map the decay curve and then I'll turn this one. Boop. All right, and there's my decay curve. And so that's how you add additional mappings, okay? Let's do one more. Um, let's map, uh, two, 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 two. This is a green sample engine. Hmm, let's map the start time, right? So if I turn this knob, actually turn off learn for a second. Let's say I wanted to change the start time with a knob on push, okay? Well, I need to pick um, a CC. So let's go back out here. Oh, let's give this a name. So that one's um, attack curve. And this one was decay curve. All right, let's say I want to do this one too. We, so we open this back up. 
we'll just pick some more CCs. We'll make this one 44, and we'll make this one 45. All right, and we'll map them to macro seven and macro eight. Okay, then we can put that away. All right, so these are sitting here waiting to be mapped. When we go back into pigments, we say learn. And I say, okay, sample start time. It's going to be this one. All right, that's mapped and working. And uh, we need something else. Um, well, let's see. Filter one cutoff frequency is 74, right? So I won't do a learn on that one. I will manually. So that was here already. 74 is filter one cutoff. So I go back into my little CC8 plugin and I change this to be filter one cutoff 74. So I'll make this 74. 74. Okay. So now, so this is sample start time. And this one is F1 filter one cutoff. Okay. So, and as you can see, that's what's showing up on the push labels here now, right? So I can go in, I can just start this, I can play with the filter, play with my envelopes. So you can map whatever you want, okay? And you can just rinse and repeat. Uh, let's say I want to do more. So I'll go get another one of these CCA plugins. I'll drop it in here. It doesn't matter the order, but I will group that to give it its own set of controls, right? I'll do these mappings again. One, two, it's a little bit of a manual process. And if you know of a way to automate this, or if there's a shortcut in live for doing this quicker, let me know. Seven, eight. Okay, so now the controls for this are mapped to here, and I need to pick some CCs. Uh, well, what else did pigments have sort of built in? Um, and you could do more, you could do the same one twice. If you want to have filter frequency over here, but you also want it over here, you can do that. So filter one cutoff is 74. So I set this 74. What was resonance? 77, 77. Okay. And we'll give these a name. We'll say filter cutoff, filter resonance. Okay. So those are in place. Okay. Pigments should still be up. And now over on live, I've got two of these things, MIDI effects rack and MIDI effects rack. Well, you can rename the effects racks. So click on that, hit command or control R, and we'll call this, um, we'll call it VCA controls. And that gets reflected over here at the top label. So not only do my individual parameters get mapped and named, my control is as well. So, and we'll say that this one is filter control. Filter control, VCA, and we'll get the names consistent. CTRL. Okay. So now I could put pigments away. I've got these things here and I can actually just fold these up. I don't even need to think about them. And then from the push, I've got my stuff. VCA control. Here's my parameters. I want to play with my VCA envelope stuff. I want to put the tack curve, decay curve. And there's my filter control. Filter cutoff, filter res, right? And it's all being mapped into pigments. Just fine. Oh, I think I mapped filter two resonance. Uh, 77. What do I want? I want filter filter one resonance. Mm, 71. So I'll go tweak that. Open that up. Open that back up. It's not 77, it's 70, what did I say? 71, 71. And now, close that back up. And now, filter rest. There we go, filter one. Resonance is running. All right, so that's how you do it, all right? So you basically, within pigments, go in your settings menu, go to the MIDI tab, and you've already got some stuff in here already under generic MIDI controller. And it's already saved, the, it's got this config saved. It'll get saved as the set. So if I save this file, save, it'll remember all this stuff, right? But you can also export this. So if you've got a pigments mapping that you like, you could say export current config. If you go to the trouble of mapping all this stuff in here, 
right? Once you're done, you can export it, share it with your friends and say, hey, here's a mapping for a bunch of pigment stuff. It's mapped to these CCs. Or you could just save it and load it onto some other machine if you've got more than one machine running pigments or something like that. Um, anyway, so that's it. All right, so that's how you can get around. I want to be able to navigate through my VST's parameters using the page stuff that's built into Ableton. I want to do it on the push. I don't want to have to touch my computer to do this. I want to do it while I'm playing, right? Um, but I want to map more than eight in Live 10 or 16 in Live 11, right? This will let you map as many as you want because this will paginate, right? You can, if you have more than eight of these things, you'll get the little arrow on the side and you can just keep going through the devices because basically it's just some mapping of eight things to the device and then rename the device to something that makes sense. All right, so give that a whirl and uh, I don't know, leave a comment below if you have any I don't know, enhancements. If I'm doing something that could be more efficient or you've got a better way, go ahead and share it with me. And there may be, you know, if you've got Max for Live because you're gonna need it for uh, the CCA control, um, feel free to, um, you know, peruse maxforlive.com. There may be stuff that solves this problem already in a more elegant way, but this was just a discussion that came up on Discord. Is this possible? Can we do it with relatively low effort? Yeah, this seems to work. So that's it. Thanks very much. Um, as always, you've been watching Synth Seeker. Talk to you later. <laughs>